have a look here, see if you can see a spark. Welcome back to Loma for Classic and today we're going back to basics. We're talking about ignition systems and particularly a points-based ignition system. This is an old points-based distributor out of a 1966 uh, Jaguar that we'll be using for um, demonstration purposes. I'm going to show you how to set points, how to clean them, adjust them, all of that. I'm also going to set up a mini sort of ignition system on the bench and show you in real time how it works, how the spark is generated, all of that. So at the end of this video, I hope that you'll have a better understanding how not only points-based ignition systems work, but ignition systems in general. Because even if on your, say, classic car you converted to electronic ignition, you've most likely only just replaced the points in here with a hollow effect sensor or something else that triggers the coil. It's basically doing the exact same job. So the first half of this video where we go through how ignition system work is the same on, you know, when you fit electronic ignition on a classic car. Then on modern cars, it's it's much more complicated with coil and plug and a lot of other things. We're not going into that at all. We're just sticking to the classics here. So if you either haven't been around points for a while, maybe it's been years, maybe you've never seen points before, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of how they work and that they're actually not as bad as people say they are. They get pretty bad rep in the uh, classic car worlds. People just want to remove them right away, but I don't think they necessarily have to. If you set them up correctly and you maintain them, there's nothing really wrong with them. To try and show the basics of a points-based ignition system, I set up a really simple ignition system here with just parts I had laying around. So this is the same distributor we had a look at before. It's out of my 1966 Jaguar S type uh, barn find. It's been off the road since the mid 70s. Uh, according to the previous owner, the car was started up maybe about 10 years ago or so, but um, I mean, I don't know if that's 100% accurate. If you have a look inside here, it is really, really dirty. I haven't done anything with it at all. And just pulled this off the engine, you know, about half an hour ago. Definitely, it hasn't been looked at for a while. But the funny thing is, I set all this up. I grabbed the coil from that car as well. And just a spare HC lead, spare spark plug here. And everything works. So that is a true testament that a points-based ignition system is really really reliable i mean of course everything's can go wrong we'll go into that a little bit later but if it's set up properly it is actually more reliable than people think it is yes everyone wants electronic ignition but good old points will usually always get you home so let's briefly talk about how the ignition system works because if you don't understand that then the rest of this is not going to make any sense to you but this is also just extremely, extremely basic. I mean, I can make a whole video on really just the coil, but basically what it works is the coil is what generates the spark. Um, some people do think that the spark is generated in here. No, in the distributor, the spark is distributed around the engine. So this rotates this way on the engine. You have the distributor cap that goes on there. You have the King lead here in the middle so the spark travels from the coil down this lead here onto your rotor and then it goes out onto the contact points here basically in your firing order and then gets sent off to the correct cylinder so this is a six cylinder car so you have six lobes on here and the lobe as you can see when it gets rotated it opens and closes the points so how does that help with the coil? The coil has two windings in it, a primary and a secondary winding. They will differ from different coils. You might have a three ohm coil or a one and a half ohm. We could go into that in a different video. It all depends on if you have a 12 volt system, six volt system, balanced. There's a lot of things, but I've just set up a really basic 12 volt system here. So you have the primary winding, and in the primary winding, you get battery current. So I have, you see hooked up here, the positive up here to the positive on the coil. The negative of the coil is actually connected over here to the points. And then it's disconnected right now, but then I have the negative hooked up here 
just to the ground of the distributor would be the ground of your car. And then I'll put the negative on the battery post over there. So you get 12 volts into the coil that will create a magnetic field between the primary and the secondary winding, a bit like an electromagnet from school, if you remember that. And what happens is when the circuit is broken by the contact points, that's why they're also known in some place in the world as contact breakers, because they break the circuit, they open up. When that happens, all of the stored energy in here gets shot out the middle, so the secondary coil travels down the HT leads or you know through the distributor cap and then out to the spark plug and you get a spark out there. That's really the basics of it, but this happens, you know, incredibly, incredibly fast. This is just rotating incredibly fast. Points open and close, open and close, open and close, and lots and lots of spark out there. That is really, really the basics of how ignition system works. I'm gonna set up the camera now and show you guys that this actually works, even though it hasn't been used for years. I'll show you what the spark looks like. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. This is an old spark plug out of a V12. You know, this coil is probably from the 60s, everything. But it does get a spark and it does work. I'm gonna complete the circuit now by connecting up the negative of the battery terminal. I also put on some gloves just so I don't get a shock. So you see here, it's the spark plug. I'm gonna ground it out on here. So imagine that this is the ground from the cylinder head. And then I'm gonna go around here, spin the bottom of the distributor and try and spin it pretty quickly and have a look here, see if you can see a spark. I hope that you guys can see that. I'm gonna focus in a little closer on it. Now that we understand how ignition system works, let's move on to the points part of it. So we're gonna talk about how to clean them, adjust them, what can go wrong, the various parts in here. It's basic, basic routine maintenance. Because this was routine maintenance back in the day. I have the, the workshop or service manual here for the car that this distributor came out of, 1966 S-Type. So service manual on your engine, routine maintenance, right down here. It says how to set the gap. The gap should be 14 thousandths to 16 thousandths of an inch, which is 0.36 to 0.41 millimeters. It says we're supposed to lubricate it because this is routine maintenance. It differs from car to car how often you're expected to do this. Usually it's you know once a year. So if you're yearly, uh, when you have your yearly sort of major service, you would uh, clean the points or more often than not, just replace them. These are so, so cheap. They're still really, really cheap. So I would not clean this if I was putting this back in the car. I would take these out, put in new ones because they're just dirt, dirt cheap. It's a lot easier to do that. Your old set that still works, you can keep as a spare in the glove box, in a little box in case something were to happen. So before we go on to the adjustment part, let's just quickly talk about sort of the other part that we haven't mentioned before. Over here, you have the condenser. So you might have heard people saying points and condenser. That's because they go together. Just the basics of a condenser is really that it prevents premature wear of the points because while there is sparking at the spark plug, you have a tiny bit of sparking in here as well, but you don't want too much because that will wear out and foul the points and then your ignition system won't work so well. So this basically helps that um, you don't get too much arcing or sparking in here and basically makes the points last longer. The condensers are a common, sort of the common failure point that can happen. It, I've heard a lot that people talk about more newer condensers that are not made as well as the old ones and then they fail pretty easily. I have not experienced that myself. I run cars with points ignition and I've put in new points and condensers and I've never had a failure, but some people say they have a lot of failures. I don't know about that, but a lot of people say that the old condensers, the high quality ones from the 60s will last, last forever. So some people keep them in there and just replace uh, the points. So we're gonna take these out in a little bit, but I'm gonna set up the camera on the other side with some extra lights and I'll show you how to adjust them.
Before we adjust them, I'm just going to do one thing to make things easier for you guys to see. On this particular distributor, this part here is plastic or uh, Bakelite or something, and it can be removed. So I'm just going to remove it so you guys are able to see a little bit better. It's just a tiny little nut in there. And a little plastic washer. And that's the connection point. This is not something that you need to do just to adjust the points, but I just want to make it a little more clear for you guys and make it a little easier to see. So now I hope you guys can see everything a lot more easily. You can see how dirty it is. So you'll believe me that I have not been in here before. You can see the cam in here. It has six sides on it because this is a six cylinder engine. It was a V8. There'd be eight of those, four cylinder, four of those. And you know, two cylinder. There is usually four of them, but then on the distributor cap, the other two uh, um, cylinders are just blanked off. So as it rotates now, you can see it's opening and closing. So how you adjust them is really quite simple. You make sure that the cam here is on the top of a lobe, so it's open as much as it will be. Get your feeler gauge, put it in there and see what it is. So you want, you know, just like when you feel anything with a feeler gauge that there should be slight resistance, but not too much. So this is basically almost falling through there. So these points are open a little bit too much. It took a 16th of an inch feeler gauge, but I'd say they're very, very well adjusted. Normally I probably wouldn't do anything about this. This would be just fine, but I'm going to show you how to adjust them. So you have a screw here, which you can loosen. I hope I can because it's probably been stuck down for a long time. Let me see. I should have loosened this before I start filming. Some gentle taps with a hammer and this thing loosened up. It really shouldn't be too tight. Of course you don't want things to move, but still you should be able to get it off. So if I get new points, I'll probably get a new screw here as well. As you can see when I opened it up, the points closed up right away. So. It's really quite simple. You just open that up and you can use the screwdriver on most distributors. There is a place here where you can sort of open up the points a little bit. Don't have to open them up too much, just enough so you get the feeler gauge in there. And that will be held in place by itself. And tighten it down. And as you can see, that is better than before. So now we're getting some resistance. However, it's not too close. It's, there is still a tiny, tiny gap in there. And that's all there is. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny gap. So we'll see, now it's completely closed. See, it's not even touching on there. It's completely, completely closed. Opens up and See, it's actually almost a little bit too, too small. But I think if I have the 16th or the 14th of an inch feeler gauge, that would go in there, no problem at all. But if you want, you know, there's nothing against it. You can open it up a little bit more. And, you know, this is all different in different cars. So after a while, you get a feel for what is the optimal setting for your car. I'm just gonna. And you can sometimes you know, use a hand to, cause to hold it open just a tiny bit while you're tightening it down. There we go. That is actually a lot better adjusted now. So as you can see, they're opening and closing very, very slightly. And that's all that is. So that is how you adjust them. Cleaning them is, well, it's really quite simple as well. I usually recommend just to replace them if they're dirty. However, if you want to clean them in the car, I'll show you how to do that now. It's very, very simple. Grab a piece of very, very fine sandpaper or memory cloth. Fold it up so you get two sides to it. Get it on a lobe. Try and force it between the points and 
basically just move it back and forth like this and clean it up. So this would be sort of the easy way of cleaning them up if you're stuck on the side of the road. It just doesn't want to get make any contact between there. They're dirty. You want to get home, clean them up like this. That's also if you're using, you know, like the business card, if you don't have feeler gauges with you, usually just running that back and forth will be enough to clean them up to get them to work again. Maybe even running the feeler gauge back and forth would be enough. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is back in the day, there was a tool, especially for Lucas distributors, which looked like a small little screwdriver in the end, and then it went up sort of like a key here and built into it was a feeler gauge. That was a screwdriver and feeler gauge. So that was a small tool you could have in the glove box. I don't know if you can still get them. I have one somewhere laying around, couldn't really find it. And that was a tool two in one on setting points. So now they're all set, opening and closing. They're nice and clean. You're good to go, you should make it home. Then you can of course disassemble them, clean them even better, or you know just replace them. So let's talk about how to get them out of here. It's really quite simple. You remove the screw, and that removes them out of here, and then you remove the condenser over here. So we can start by getting the points out, and this will of course be different on different models. And everything is really tight and fiddly, so you don't want to drop anything in here, of course. And yeah, so here is one part of the points. This is the part that opens and closes. You can see that, I mean, I did not clean it very much at all and it's still really dirty. So you should probably take it apart, but the little sandpaper trick could be enough just to get you going in a pinch. And there is a usually some type of fiber or plastic washer in between here because you don't want a connection between the outer and inner part. Only one that points touch, of course. And then you have the base part here, which moves back and forth on the adjuster here to adjust them. And I'm not going to remove the condenser right now. But it's just that little screw there that moves out. This will, of course, be different on different distributors. But the whole idea behind it is pretty much the same. There's one more thing about routine maintenance with points ignition system is this part wears. And due to that wear, that's why the point gap you know, closes up. To prevent that wear, you're supposed to lubricate this part of the distributor on here just a tiny, tiny bit, usually with some dielectric grease, but check your manual on what your specific vehicle needs and that will help prevent premature wear. Because if this is, runs completely dry, this will get hot and just melt away and your points will close up in no time at all. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked this sort of back to basics how-to video. I try to do them sometimes. We've done it with uh, SU cars, we've done them with fuel pumps, uh, tuning and some other things. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any other sort of basic mechanical things you want me to cover in a how-to video like this. Anyways, I'd like to take this time to thank the supporters over on Patreon for their continued support of the channel. So thanks to them, I can continue making these videos every week. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Anyways, until next time, I'm Adam, and this was a little bit of a classic. I'll see you soon.